my name is John and today I'm going to walk you through creating a memorial sign. I recently had a Pirate 4x4 member contact me and due to a time crunch and uh, learning curve due to the software, he asked that if I can try to put together a memorial sign and record it for him so that you can see how I go about uh, approaching something like this and it can I only have a few parameters, so I don't know exactly what's being looked for, but I'm just going to go ahead and make something um, according to what looks good to me, and then things can be tweaked from there. Now, one thing that I discovered I do not have a talent for is artistic stuff and uh, kind of that graphic design stuff, creating things out of my mind. I struggle in that area, so I tend to use Google. So one of the things that I went and did on Google is I'll look up memorial signs. And if I spell memorial right, and I'll go to the images, and I'll look through here. A lot of this is just square blocky stuff. I really don't care for any of that. Um, this classic copy sign, it's got a little bit more uh, stuff around it that, that could be interesting um, as far as a shape to follow. Now, I wasn't told whether or not a cross would be appropriate for this memorial sign. Just uh, the only parameter I had was maybe one foot by one foot. Um, and so I'm going to look in here. I like this, um, this in memory of Lillian Pro Propes or Prope or whatever her name is. I like that curve on the top. That's that tombstone look. Um, I like that. Um, there's just different ideas you can get by coming out here. Now, a lot of these ideas aren't that great, but, uh, sometimes all you need is just a little bit of a spark. So I think we're going to go ahead and go for a wide tombstone look. So let's go ahead and try this. And actually, I wasn't planning on this, but there is a tombstone option right here, the monument option. Um, so I select the monument tool. I can drag it out. Now, the size doesn't matter so much right now. There's the object width, height. Now, this is the arch, the bulge. We can do this. If I click on the arch, you notice that it gives us that, that more of a tombstone look. And I'm just going to go for a look that looks right. That's a little too shallow. This looks this looks about right. Now if I uh, take this and resize it, you can see everything will be resized appropriately or equally. You can spread it out, do whatever, grab these points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and maximize this a little bit. And looking down at the fonts that I'm to put in here, um, the request was that I use this font right here, Heisen Regular, or however you would like to pronounce that. Now I don't have that font, but I do have something that is close um, from the font CD that I have from Torchmate. If I come in here and I were to type, let's just go ahead and type V-Town. And if you want to uh, adjust the kern percent or the spacing between everything here, you can tweak that here, but I know what I'm going to do with this V-Town, so I'm going to leave the current alone right now. But let's go ahead and find that font. I believe it is called Thunderbird. So I just start typing. If I click in this box and start typing the font name, it'll take me to there. Now that is kind of wide and large. Um, the Heisen regular, I think, is not so bold looking. But if we were to take this and shrink it down, um, we can come out with something that's a little more decent. Now what I would like to do is put V-Town up in this area, but I think I'd like to curve it. Um, it's a little large for my taste currently, so let's go ahead and shrink it down. And I think we'll put it right in here. Now, if you have um, the full version of CAD software, you can do what I'm about to do. If you don't have the full version of CAD software, you can come in here, select your text box, your text tool, bring it to a curve, and you notice that the T changes from a hollow T to a black filled T. If you click on that and you were to type v-town, you'll notice that it sticks it to that curve. And then if you come in, double click on that curve and do Alt-I, which brings up what's called an instant replay box. And I wish I could show you where these tools are at, but I don't remember anymore. So Alt-I, let's do this again. With this highlighted, Alt-I, you'll see this fit text path. If you double click on that, you have some options to tweak this. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to tweak the font. So I can come in here and 
make sure I get the correct V-Town. It's this one. If I double click on that font, Control A, I can shrink this down a little bit. Notice how wacky that gets. Um, don't worry about that. That's just what I would consider a bug with the software. Um, but as soon as I deselect that, you notice it corrects itself. So what I want to do now is I'm going to do Alt I, bring up my instant replay, double click on my fit text to path option. I'm going to go ahead and um, make this go underneath the text. Click on this this uh, text outside path, hit apply. You notice it stuck it down and it actually happened to center it for me this time. Um, this is kind of the, the effect I'm going for. I'll go ahead and accept that. But I don't necessarily like the way it looks right now. So we're going, to, we're going to go ahead and work with this. Now, if you were to try to move this, it's stuck to the path. So what you have to do is Control b or um, Arrange Break Path. And then the O, let's do a XOR weld on that so that it's truly an O. Now, if I were to take this, because I broke the path, let's, let's group it. We'll go to Arrange, uh, Order. See, I told you I don't remember where these are at. Maybe it's Layout. Layout group. I usually do Control G, and you can bump this down. And actually, once you bump that down, I don't think that looks too bad. Um, I don't think this font does very well with this particular lettering, so I'm not sure if this is what's needed. But if you want to go and tweak this in the future, because we already broke the path on it, you will not be able to go and adjust the font. Um, so you want to you want to play around with these things. Now, what we're going to do is, I would like to emphasize Big G. That's the name uh, in the memorial. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create uh, Big G in quotes. I actually think Big G, with this particular font, looks pretty good. Because it, it is a large font. And um, I'm just going to tweak it a little bit because my font is not exactly like this Heisen regular font. Um, I'm trying to make it look a little more like it. So now what we're going to do is center this on, on this tablet. So shift click um, the text and then what we want to center it on, do an Alt K which brings up your alignment tool. Again I usually have aligned to last object selected. I'm going to center it vertically and horizontally. Now vertically I don't know if that's exactly where where I want it. I might want to move it down a little bit. Maybe if I were to center it from this point to this point. Um, but I will. We do have a lot of font to go on the bottom, so uh, let's just go ahead and leave it for now. Now I want. I would like Big G to be emphasized, so I would like to change RIP and AFFA, and I don't know what these stand for. Well, RIP I do, but. Um, AFFA, I, I don't know what that stands for, but I think for consistency's sake, I'd like to do RIP and AFFA and uh, probably VTown in some other font. So what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, pick something. Let's go in here and type AFFA. I did that all in caps, but the Thunderbird happens to put everything in caps anyway. And what we're going to do is go ahead and tweak a font. Now, if you were actually at my house, you could see that I have a poster on the wall that shows me all of the different fonts that I have, at least uh, from the CD. And I'm trying to find one called, I gotta look what I wrote down, Ariel. And if I look at my board, Ariel dash B, I wanna go for the bold. I like this the look of this font. Um, in fact, it for plasma cutting it actually uh, is decent. It probably you don't have to do a whole lot with it um, as far as dropouts and things go. But we'll just go ahead and uh, use this font for now. I'm going to go ahead and select everything in here, Control A, and I do want to adjust the current percent on here. I don't want that so far apart. So we'll just come down. Let's maybe come down to a hundred. That's a little too close, so let's go into 110. And let's go to 120. I think that's decent. Now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do Control D for duplicate. 
I'm going to move this up here and double click in it, control A to select for all and just go ahead and type rip. Now rip, I could put the periods in there. Let's see what it looks like. Again, the design I think is, is half the battle. I actually think it looks better with the um, periods in there so we'll just go ahead and leave it. So what I want to do is I want to center these two objects on this so we'll do highlight everything. The last object selected is the one I'm going to center it on. Alt K. And let's just go ahead and center it horizontally. And that looks pretty good to me. Now um, these things aren't distributed equally but that's okay for now. What we want to type now is never forgotten, only missed and loved. Now this font I think would look probably funny if we were to uh, well, if we were to use some of the fonts that we've been using, so we're going to go ahead and select another one. Typically, for consistency's sake, you don't want to do that, but um, we're going to go ahead and do it in this one. Now, I had a bunch of fonts written down because uh, as I designed this, I wanted to uh, make sure that I had a decent font, and so you didn't have to sit here and watch me try to pick one. So I'm going to select one called Antal-L. No, and tall dash L. And this actually works well for this font. So never forgotten, only missed and loved. I think I'm going to go ahead and divide this onto two lines. So we'll come in here and put an enter and delete my space that I had there. So this everything is centered here now. And I'm kind of liking the way this looks. I had another option that I'm going to uh, send the person that had requested this, but um, I'm kind of liking the way this looks. Let's go ahead and center this. Remember the last centering I did was horizontally. And so if I want to use the exact same option for centering that I did last time without bringing up the alignment tool, Alt-K, um, I can do Control K and that'll apply the last option that I used in the alignment tool. So there's a couple of problems with this. If I zoom in, you can see that my grid is sixteenth of an inch. So you can kind of see that you have just barely over an eighth of an inch between the lettering top and bottom and left to right. That's actually decent. Um, I think what I'm going to do though is I'm going to see what it looks like if I were to come to the end of here and enter again. Actually, let me just do Control Z a couple of times. Sometimes I don't necessarily know why things behave the way they behave, so I um, just go ahead and play around with things a little bit and we'll get it to work. Okay, so I don't like that so much. So we'll just bring it up here, and I'm just using my commands that I've already given you, like Control K. And so what we're going to do is, if you were to try to cut this out, you're going to have your E. You're going to be missing the inner parts of your E's, your O's, your G's, your D's. So what we have to do is go through and use some, do some tedious work. But um, this is something that you have to get used to doing. And the quickest way to go ahead and do this is what I'm going to demonstrate right now. So the very first thing I need to do is I need to break this text, control B, and break this text, control B. Now, if I were to move all of this out here on the screen, F7, F6 to zoom in and out, and do an Alt S to show my fill, you would see the problems. If you were to cut this out, everything in dark black like that would be what is cut out. So that's what we're going to correct. So I'm going to do control Z to move that back to where I had it. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is tweak one of the E's. Um, I'm going to, because I broke the path on those, I'm going to come in here and do an XOR weld, which is my control one option. So I'm going to start using that. So if I say XOR weld and you don't see me use it, that's because I'm using a hotkey. Now that I've done that, that is one object. And remember, these are 16th of an inch. I think an eighth inch gap for your E would be decent. So let's make it about an eighth inch wide. I'm going to move it over to the left. I'm going to control D or duplicate that because I'm going to use this over and over as a tool. 
Now if I were to take these two objects and select them and do a control one, I can come in here and delete this because I did an XOR weld. And then if I double click on this, I can come in here and delete these two points out here and our curve looks fine. I'm going to actually curve this a little bit just for looks. That is our E. Assuming everything looks okay to you, you can go ahead and take this and actually this doesn't look okay to me. There's a couple of points in here that look a little funny. I'm going to delete them and I'm just going to manually put a little arc in here. And maybe this is being a little too picky with plasma. But that looks better to me now. So what I'm going to do is control D on the E. That's duplicate for the E. I'm going to shift click the outside of the E here. Alt K and we're going to center it vertically and horizontally. And once we've done that we can come in here and delete these two lines and we have a perfect E there that matches our other E. So let's go ahead and do this for the other E. So control D, shift click, control K, delete these, control D, shift click, control K, and I would recommend you get used to the hotkeys. It's a little hard at first, but it will save you a lot of time in the long run. It starts to become second nature to you. And I'm just repeating these steps. So we'll double check all of our E's. It looks like our E's are okay. So now what we need to do is we need to move on to our O. So we're going to go ahead and grab this. I'm going to duplicate it. I like to have one around since that's the size we're using. Um, we're going to go to our first O. Remember there's two objects here, the outside and the inside because we broke them. So let's combine them with an XOR weld, control one for me. Center this. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to zoom in and ex extend this vertically. XOR weld all of this, delete the stuff in the middle, and that's our O. Let's group it, control G for group. Again, that's under a layout group. And now that we've grouped that, we're going to control D it for duplicate. And we're basically going to repeat this process of copying it over on top of other O's. Control K, delete, delete. And we have another one over here, Control D, shift click, Control K. Again, this is the tedious part, but if you learn the hotkeys, you will be able to move a lot quicker. So let's just make sure we got all of the O's. We did. We need to go and tweak our G. Okay, so let's take this object here, Control D to duplicate it. It's moved it out of the screen, but it's there. Now we're going to take this and move it down into our G. And just from experimentation, yesterday when I was messing with this, trying to see how I wanted to create the sign, I brought this all the way up and clipped the G just like this, but it looked funny. So we're not going to do that here. We're just going to bring this a little bit down. We'll get it close to, to where we want it to be. Okay, and oh, one thing I forgot to do, forgot to X or weld the G, control one. Now I'll control one this, delete everything right here in the middle. Now we're going to come in here, double click on this. Let's go ahead and delete these points right here. That looks a little funny, let's delete that point. Apply that, and that looks okay. One thing you may want to do is, again, is come in here to the opposite side, and curve that whatever looks good to you. So that was the only G that we have. So never forgotten, only missed and loved. Okay, so that's G. Let's go on to the next one. Um, e, D, we have a D that we need to take care of. So let's go down here. Let's duplicate this, Control D. You can see I use duplicate quite a bit, especially when you're doing text, things like this. And similar to the G, if you were to cut this off up here and down here, it does look funny in this particular instance. So we're just going to go ahead and do it here only. So make sure I I didn't control I didn't XOR weld those, so XOR weld those. Now XOR weld this, chop out the middle, come down here, double click on this, delete these points. That looks pretty good. Um, for consistency's sake, let's give it a little bit of curve here. I did not do that on the O's. Um, they already have their own curve, so it's up to you if you want to do that or not. Control D. And it's the same process. Control K, come in here and delete, delete. Oops, wrong one. Control Z, 
Control Z is one of those favorites you're going to learn. It's done undo. And we have another D, so Control D, highlight that, Control K, come in here and delete these points. Um, by the way, the zooming in and out like this that I keep doing, that is using my mouse wheel. Um, you can highlight things and do F7, F6, 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 um, if you want to. Um, I, I use both quite often. So let's make sure we have everything that looks correct. Never forgotten, only missed and loved. So if I were to take everything here, slide it down and do an alt test to show my fill you'll notice that I missed one my A so I need to fix my A there so alt S again and we're going to control Z just get it back where I had it and let's go fix our A I believe we only have the one A so I don't need to duplicate this object again and we're just going to go ahead and tweak this just like we did everything else okay now remember because I broke my text I have to combine these inner and outer loops on letters so X or weld control one in my case again control one with everything highlighted come in here double click these let's delete all these points in the middle and we'll give a little bit of curve to this remember that uh, on my system on my screen this is 1 16th of an inch so I'm about an eighth inch gap if you're going to be cutting this I would be using fine cut consumables if you're using a hypertherm unit I can't speak for other units because I, that's not what I have I have a hypertherm so um, fine cut I think you'll be fine if you used a regular plasma head like a 45 amps in my case this might be a little tight um, so let's just make sure we don't have any A's so everything's good again a test for that is bring it off the uh, the main piece because if you alt this everything's black and you can't see it but everything looks good here now. Now I'm not going to get any drops. You don't see any weird black stuff going on. Um, so Control Z, and what we're going to do is group all of these letters. Control G, and we're going to make them part of the sign. So select the sign and do a Control One in my case, which is the XOR weld. And notice that I lost some stuff. And that does happen sometimes, especially when you're messing with a lot of objects, even if you do group them. So Control Z. I'm going to Alt G, which is the opposite of grouping, it's ungrouping. And now I'm going to group smaller sections. Control G for never, and let's Control 1 that. What I did now, if I show my fill, you can see I cut that out. So now it's Control G the next section. Control 1, we lost some O's, so let's Control Z. Let's do the O's by themselves. Alt G to break that group up. Let's make these a group. Control 1, and I lost them again, so let's do them one at a time. Alt G. And the reason why it's doing that, um, that I have discovered, is you'll notice when I select the O, there are really two objects there, but they are uh, grouped together. So when you group a group, a group, and things like that, you'll, you can get some funny stuff going on. So let's break those up. Now, watch if I Control G everything because the O's are no longer part of that group. And if I would have remembered that earlier, I would have told you earlier but I just it just came to my mind so now control one notice that it didn't have any problems the O right here would disappear so let's alt G that um, let's make sure we don't have any other O's we do over here alt G that now for you to grab this whole bottom line control G for grouping control one oops sorry I did the wrong hotkey I did a regular weld control one alt test you'll notice that we've got that piece complete now, AFFA and RIP, um, I'm just going to go ahead and center, eyeball it. Those look about right to me. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, we'll mess with those in a minute. I like where the big G is at, so let's go ahead and group these. Actually, it's text. Um, I didn't need to group it. Let's just go Control-1, and you can see that that is now part of the sign. Um, V-Town, we'll do the same thing, Control-1. And now the reason why I have not done the RIP or the AFFA is because um, I wanted to zoom in here and see how far apart these are. This is an eighth of an inch. This is a sixteenth of an inch. Not quite enough. So I'm going to actually take the lettering, break it, control B. Now these are all their own objects. I'm going to just space this F out just a little bit, give it a little bit more of a gap. It'll match the top. It'll give yourself an eighth of an inch. And we're going to actually need to tweak the A's a little bit. So how are we going to do this? Well, 
you can come in here and try to move these nodes around I don't like doing that myself I like well the way the, the way the way you see me trim lettering is to take something like this an object a square and to do welds either a, an and weld or an XOR weld when I say and weld I mean a basic weld so um, I'm going to manually rotate this and just get it close to what the angle should be which is about like that and control D to duplicate that piece so I don't have to do it again and let's go ahead and take this piece off so highlight my cut tool basically at this point and what I want to cut control one get rid of these and now if I look at this we are almost eighth of an inch not quite as much as I want it to be so I'm going to take this control D it again because I'm going to use this tool again I'm going to come in here and cut just a little bit more off of this and I'm sure I'll show you a trick here in a minute to show you that this should work fine so we'll go ahead and cut that off now we're going to take this again and it notice that the angle is correct already for this um, control D to duplicate it and I'm going to actually come up here to my mirror tools and do a horizontal mirror which gives me about the correct angle there let's just make sure one two if I cut it off about right here that's about an eighth of an inch that looks pretty good to me so if I take these two things and this control one it's complaining because I have multiple objects selected which is but in this case it works fine now I don't have to worry about the the A getting blown up a little bit so what are we going to do we're going to take this why do that again on the other one and have uh, maybe some inconsistency so we're going to take this group it control G control D to duplicate it come over here select and we're going to actually group all these control G if you try to center it on just a piece of this it won't be centered so control G to center these take this object and then this object control K it centers it now we'll come in here and delete the old one and our AFFA is now correct remember if you want to uh, because if I select the A because it is a group if I were to try to group all of these and then do an XOR weld the A's will disappear so let's go ahead and ungroup these alt G alt G group everything control G control 1 by selecting the outside and um, if I do an alt S you notice everything's okay however notice our B up here uh, I just notice when I select everything control A not control A when I select the sign notice that our B is going to have dropouts I never corrected that so how do we fix this now that we've welded everything together well what we're going to do is highlight it control B once you break everything um, none of that stuff that we did is combined in the sign so we're going to take this control G this control G let's fix our B real quick how are we going to do it we're going to bring out a cutting tool or create a box and make it a cutting tool um, I want it to be an eighth of an inch so we'll zoom in and that's an eighth of an inch or I could come up here and do a 0.125 it's 0.13 it rounded up right now that's fine let's uh, manually shift and use my arrow keys bring that close to the edge and we're going to go ahead and I don't know how well that's going to look but we'll find out with this font take these two objects control one delete everything right here Oh, and you notice I didn't combine those because I broke the object so control Z control Z take this and the B control one now take this control one member control one in my case is an XOR weld um, I have a video on how to set up your own hotkeys and I'm just going to delete these points in the middle that looks good so now we'll group this control G and V town Okay, so we're going to control one that oops our O has a problem here too let's fix that so a lot of repetition here you can see that I'm not doing anything new just a lot of repetition now I could center this but I already know that this is centered um, so I'm not going to worry about it so shift click let's make the because I broke the path let's do a control one on these control one on these delete everything in the middle now our O on the V town is okay. I think we're going to have a problem with our W. Um, that would end up cutting too far and it'll be a dropout. So let's go ahead and make this again. 0.13 is fine. 
we're going to manually rotate this until we get it close. Let's just about center that. Control D to duplicate that. Let's bring it down on this section of the W. We'll eyeball it. And remember this is uh, plasma. Even if a laser eyeballing something this like this, you I don't think you would notice if anything was off. Control 1 that. Shift click. Control 1 that. We'll delete this. Delete this. I think our W will survive now. N. Now this time, I'm going to just double click on this. Because this is a special font, I'm just going to move this point a little bit here and adjust this arc. And I think what we'll do is we'll right click on this point and delete that node. Now we have a little bit, bit larger gap there. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll move this just a little bit here. And I'm just manually doing it because I don't think it's necessary to go through the other steps that we've done. And I think we're going to have to tweak our V here. So let's do another eighth inch, 0 0.13. 0 0.125 is what it really is an eighth inch. But since I've been using 0.13, let's go ahead and stick with it. Um, okay, so now we'll just tweak this a little bit more so we've got the correct angle. That's a little bit too much. And I just adjusted it by one degree manu up here by selecting this box, hit box, hitting one and enter. So that looks good to me. Again, XOR weld. So again, when you're using text, you just, you just have to kind of come in here and tweak everything. So now we're going to group this, control G, control one with this selected, same thing here. And I could do this, um, all at once, but I'm trying to slow it down a little bit. Alt S, this, this is what we've got so far. Um, now let's go and tweak our rip. Again, it's just tweaking text. We've, we've got to make sure that every, every, nothing's going to fall apart, so we're going to break this part, control B. I'm going to move this P out just a little bit. We want about an eighth inch gap. So shift, hold this out, and eighth inch would bring me about one, a little bit more. There, does it look funny to do that? I don't think it does. So zoom in a little bit. Do the same thing here. Uh, one about there. I think that looks pretty OK. And let's go ahead and do the same thing to this. And we don't have a big enough gap over here. So what we're going to do is just let's go ahead and just trim this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and take two nodes off here, one node off here. I don't mind the curve there a little bit. It actually looks pretty good, and we've got a sufficient enough gap. I like that. So now we're going to go ahead. Oops, Control Z again. That's your friend when you do something you're not expecting to. Um, one thing I should mention: save often. Uh, your work is only important as uh, much as you want to save it, because if something can go wrong, power going out, uh, you can lose it. It's happened to me. There are backup options, which I haven't done a video on. Um, maybe I'll do a video on that sometime. So it's regular save intervals, backups. So control one. And if I do an alt S, everything looks good here. Now I'm going to get rid of all this stuff out here on the right. And this is the sign that we've created. Okay, so the if I highlight the sign, notice it is 18 inches by about 18 inches. The parameters that I was given is they wanted it closer to one in one foot by one foot. Well, if I keep this proportional scaling box locked and I come in here and adjust it to 12 inches it'll adjust it proportionally so um, you can make the sign bigger or small as you want uh, my, my table in particular is a 2x4 um, so I, you can go up to about 24 inches um, I go to about 23 and a half on mine to be safe just give myself a little room around the edges but you can make this big and small um, you'll be okay now the only thing you have to be aware of is that when you shrink this down let's make it 12 inches um, when you come into this this small font now you are dealing with just over a sixteenth of an inch if you're not using fine cut consumables and even maybe it with fine cut consumables you may have um, you may have some dropouts and things so that's something to be aware of if that's the case, if you want, you really want something this small and you're pushing the limits here, you're going to have to come in here and widen those gaps by the, doing it the exact same way that I've done it. Um, there may be other methods. That's just my method, again. Um, now, 
just for the sake of showing a little variety, one thing that I was messing with was this type of format. Um, you notice that I kind of did a curve on a round circle and then I did a square box and did some mitering around the edges and rounding the corners and um, you notice on the big G on the right this was this was the original concept I was doing on the right let's group everything control G control G over here so originally you notice the big G um, the G how close that is you could get a drop out there and I came over here and I tweaked it the exact same way um, I did the A's I did all the lettering down in this bottom area I didn't did not do it on the right side um, you'll notice that if you were to apply a tool path to something skinny like this font you're not going to get it. Um, in fact, let's do this. Alt S. I mean, what I'm going to do is show you what I mean. And I apologize for how long this video is, but I'm hoping that you find things, you find some things useful in it. Okay, so let's just uh, make this easy on myself. Alt Control B to break it apart. Okay, so I'm going to take this A for instance. A, deselect the F, control 1. Now if you were to try to take this A, let's just give ourselves a circle. I'm going to do a female toolpath on that, or do make the lettering female toolpath. We'll come in here and tweak this. Again, we'll have to tweak our A real quick. It won't matter, but um, because we're not really going to cut it out, but let's just go ahead and go through the motions. Okay, so now we won't have any dropouts on the A. Now if you were to try to, let's make this part of this, Control-1, Alt-S, you'll notice that this is what we have. If you were to try to apply a toolpath to this, now let me just show you my toolpaths only, look what you get on the A. If your toolpath, um, if, your if your curve width is smaller than what the, the toolpath can adjust for it gets dropped out. So that's the, let me do Control Z. So that's why I did chose not to use that font. Um, it's cool looking. You can use it with a plate marker. That'd be great. Um, but in this case, if you just all plasma, that's that's not a good option. It, it looks cool, but um, not what we're going for. And then uh, I I experimented with some different fonts over here, and then. Before I re basically created this video, I realized that they wanted a different font. So those are just making things up as I go along. You can see that, it, uh, again, this is not my strong point. I'm going to control C this, bring it over to this screen, and do a control V for paste. Those are just standard Windows commands um, that you use with all the other programs. And these are just my ideas as to uh, how to create a memorial. Um, you could easily take this name out of the middle and use this for other memorials too if you want to. Um, things can be resized. Uh, these two objects on the right are not ready for cutting. This one on the left is ready for cutting if you were to apply a tool path. Um, it's going to vary for everybody else as far as uh, you know what tool you're going to use, a fine cut consumables or regular plasma, how big you want to make it, whatever. But this is ready to have a tool path applied to it and then go out and go ahead and cut it out. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the comments. Um, otherwise, look forward to a few more of these signs to help the same person and hopefully help some of you out in the community understand um, what it takes to make a sign and you know cut ready for plasma. So hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.